<laughs> Go ahead, Bill. <laughs> and what people can do to kind of overcome the, or at least try to augment making themselves have a better ground is they place what they call radials in the ground, which are copper wires. Hmm normally attached to a ground rod out from their transmitter uh, obviously as long as they can most people who are involved in the hobby are usually limited by the available land but the ground radials help their signal get out in lieu of the, the dirt not having the ground conductivity we would hope where we'd have. Well, so let's go back to sort of a more typical case. Somebody who isn't super technical, enough to put these things together, kind of understands the basic theory, buys, things being a, buys a talking house thing. or even buys a range master, one of the high-end uh, AM part 15 transmitters. They can expect at best a mile, right? And in many cases, probably a little less than that, maybe a few blocks, a quarter mile, half mile. Is that about correct? Pretty much so, although I've had heard cases of a compliant Part 15 installation getting out upwards of two miles or more, but of course, there's the things between the soil conductivity and how much did they put into their ground system? Did they have a boatload of radials? Do they have more than one ground rod? Do they have ground rods that are connected together and driven further into the earth? Wow. Right. Do they are they are they really are they geeking out? Are they are they are they sort of like hackers, right? Or you know what I mean? Uh, you know, really getting into it, or are they somebody who's just sort of like took it out of the box, followed the instructions, and put it up, right? And and I think sort of in a lot of ways, we're, we're, we're thinking about the people who kind of uh, do the, more of the latter, right? You know, maybe if they're ready to start doing all that hacker, they can go hacking, they can go to your website, hobbybroadcaster.net, and really dive in deep. So we want to make sure people know that. They want to learn more. But look, so you've got, you know, a station that can gun, you know, up to about a mile in, in most cases. I'm impressed. I had no idea that you could legally broadcast a mile radius around... Uh, that, that's a big, that's a big tiny radio station. To yeah, mind. I thought we were talking about in the home. And so, well, folks who do this, like, do you have a sense for like, uh, do you know people who are really treating this like broadcast stations? Like, they're really treating it more like a radio station rather than just sort of a convenient way to send audio around their house. I have quite a few members on our our community forum who actually come from the broadcast world, who have either worked on the engineering side or are production rats, and they put these stations up because they want to be able to have something that sounds like a real radio station, and they, they've taken it to the nth degree where not only where they have very good programming and might have even invested into a small automation system, but they have audio processing, which rivals their commercial counterparts. You mean the processing, the EQ that gives it that big radio sound, right? That's kind of what you mean by the processing. Uh, processing in addition to equalization as far as a compressor limiter and, um, you know, that type of uh, multiband audio processing, which really gives it the punch that you would need to cut through the noise. 